Well, it's fair to say that Sky's Ashes podcast is not going to be boring right throughout this Ashes series. And to cover off day two here at Lords, I'm joined by Ricky Ponting and Owen Morgan. Now, there's a bit to get through, fellas. We've got a major injury. We've got someone falling shy of three figures. But let's start with the fact that we've got these lovely red blazers on. It's a magical day. Fifth uh, red for Ruth Day. Yeah, it is um, for everybody involved, really. Obviously, um, Straussy being, well, forming the foundation uh, and, and, and thinking about it actually while Ruth is still alive was, was you know, something that she was quite embarrassed about and, and, and um, didn't necessarily see anything like it is now uh, formulating. So it's, uh, they'll be incredibly proud not only of the, the money that they raise each year, but the families that they support. Um, I think it's crucial that you know, identifying people that fall by the wayside in, in medical systems or cover that's not associated under insurance policy that fall under that umbrella. So it's a, it's a, it's a proud day for cricket and the stresses. And almost up to, I think, over £400,000 raised at the moment. It reminds me a little bit of the McGrath Foundation. And it's not just about the people at the ground, but the digital photos. And you can buy your own shirt and you can donate online as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's actually my first time being a part of it. It's been, it's been a great day to be a part of. As you say, we've done it for a number of years now with the McGrath Foundation at, at home, even last week with the Bob Willis Foundation yeah. the test last week. With so Bob. it's amazing what our game can actually give back and what the, what, the, what the public and what society want to be able to give back to our game and people involved in our games. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's almost like it's one way of public repaying what we've been, <laughs> players have been able to do over the years, you know. Yeah. It's the love that the, the public show for the players and what they've done through their time. So it's, it's great to be a part of and, and, and hope, let's hope that that giving's not finished now. We've got a bit more time to go in the, in yeah. the game, the day's play and then right through the course of the game and we can get some significant funds for the for the Ruth uh, Strauss Foundation. Well, I think most of us are thinking uh, these tests are going to go to five days, so hopefully it does so that we do have a few more time, days to, to give some money over. Um, session one here, 77 for five, Australia getting up to 416. Who do you think would have been happier with that? Well, I think England would have been relieved, to be honest, um, just given that, that Steve Smith looked exceptional the whole time yesterday, just in complete control and then you know, coming, coming, being not out overnight and the potential to go on and get an, a huge score and almost bat England out of the game was there. So I actually thought England did a, a reasonable job today and kept themselves in the game. And there was obviously that, that period before lunch. We don't really necessarily associate England batters with, you know, getting to stages or identifying <laughs> tricky periods. Yeah, it's yeah, about yeah. getting runs on the board. <laughs> And, but they would have been very happy going into lunch. Yeah, okay, before we get on to the England batters, let's have a chat about Steve Smith, though. <laughs> 32nd uh, Test 100, 12th against uh, England, 8th on English soil. He's now gone into second on the list for Australians in terms of hundreds. He's uh, nine shy of you at the moment. Second or equal second? Equal second. Equal second. Yeah. He's got nine to go. Got, yeah, he's going to get there pretty quickly. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I got no doubt about that. I mean... He just scores them so frequently. Mm. You know, he missed out last week, didn't he? Everyone was yeah. talking about how he's not going to miss out twice in a row, and he didn't. You know, a magnificent 100 in the World Test Championship final as well. I mean, the list of accolades just keep growing by the game and by the series. And, and you know, I think it's a, a great way to judge a player on what they can do here in England in these conditions, especially a top-order batter. I mean, he bats at number four, so not a one, two or three. But, you know, you think back to 2019, how, how hard run scoring was then. The ball moved a lot, you know, even batting yesterday, batting under lights the whole day on, in yeah. bowler-friendly conditions. They didn't look like getting him out. He just doesn't make mistakes. That's a, it's it's error-free batting, and that's, he's done that for so long. That, you know, this technique that he's honed and, you know, it, opposition teams must go to bed at night just wondering how on earth how on earth are we going to get him out? Because there's no real chink in that armour. Well, I mean, we've seen him LBW a few times since he's been in England this time around. But, you know, through his career and making the moves that he does, it's amazing that he hasn't been out LBW more. But, you know, what a player. I'm not, not going to say what a player he's becoming because he's been, you know, been a great player for six or seven years now. And, you know, he's in his mid-30s. He's got a lot of cricket ahead of him. And all sorts of records could tumble as he goes on. Yeah, well, he's 34. I think if Australia's sort of averaging 11 to 14 test matches a year, he averages a century every sort of two and a half. So you're right, it's only probably going to take him two and a half years to get to 41 and on. It's pretty crazy, isn't it? Yeah, and that's if he wants to do it. I've been a bit surprised the last couple of years when I've heard him say he doesn't know where the end's going to be. He, doesn't, yeah. he can't guarantee if he's going to be in the Australian summer next year, but 
I think he likes batting too much. <laughs> yeah. not to if he's not playing for, if he's not doing it for Australia, he'll be batting somewhere. Absolutely. So, so he knows about it. No <laughs> doubt that he will be batting for a long time in whatever capacity. I mean, I was sitting up here sort of laughing and chuckling in many ways this morning when he is full gear on and he's off out this morning for a bat, yeah. not out overnight. That is the last thing I would have been thinking of. But he is so different. I and, mean, you know, it's, it's, it's telling. You're the most recently retired out of the three of us. Did you know? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. No, 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 you do. But I, I don't get, look, Joe Root's very similar in, in listening to you guys describe the way Steve Smith goes about batting and his love for the game and just his constant strive for perfection the whole time. And, and again, it's probably the same question. Joe Root still could play for a long, long time. And I, I think he will play for a long, long time because he just loves batting. Okay. The other side of that, though, is it, it, the, more, the more they train, are they actually shortening their careers? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like if you're yeah. trying to stay, you know, fresh, fresh. And, you know, are they yeah. bat actually yeah. doing too much batting to yeah. you know, stretch out their careers yeah. even even longer? So that's another way to think of it. But I don't think we're going to stop either of those two batting. Yeah. That's, I think that's a whole other podcast. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we can get back to your England opening bats <laughs> too now. <laughs> they were good. They just saw it off before the lunch. They wanted to come out and then own that, that middle session. Uh, Crawley was the first to go. Uh, Lion, well bowled drags a, a batter out of the crease, which he's so good at. And Carey, I think, probably going to give a bit of kudos to his keeping as well as his batting this season. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, his keeping's been good for a long time. I think his batting, his batting's come on leaps and bounds in the last 12 months. Uh, and actually, Owen and I were talking about it um, halfway through the day's play about, you know, the intent that he shows with his batting and um, and being able to put pressure back on bowlers from the start. But he, that, that, that bit of work today, I mean, he's been exceptional behind the stumps right the way through this series there might have been a couple that were sort of down the middle of him and first slip that he maybe could have gone for that he didn't but that stumping today completely unsighted of the ball on the way down just clipped the pad which made it deviate even more but as you see the, the ball it doesn't just go in his gloves it goes deep right deep, in the middle yeah. of his gloves and then yeah it was a terrific piece of work okay play is still going on at lords and i'm going to mention this because steve smith is coming on to bowl i think he debuted back in 2010 as a leg spinning all-rounder. He is on, and most people sort of listening in might th be thinking why, which fast forward to Nathan Lyon in the 37th over, uh, looking to attempt a catch out in the deep. It fell short, but it was one of those ones where you go, oh, that doesn't look good, and it looks as if he has tweaked his calf. Um, it's probably one of the big turning points for the series, isn't it, Ricky, if you lose? But England's already lost Leach at the start of the series. Yep. If Australia lose their frontline spinner, that is massive. It could very well be, absolutely. Um, and I, I know having spoken to this bloke that's bowling now, Stephen Smith, he's about the most reluctant bowler you'll come across. <laughs> I've just spotted his average of 53. He averages 60 with a the bat. They do say true all-rounders, you know. <laughs> absolutely. Is he qualified? As long as their bowling average is under their batting average. <laughs> yeah. that's, 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 that is what they say. But I, I reckon I know what's happened here. He would have been... Not even looking in Pat Cummins' direction. Yeah, <laughs> trying to avoid it. Yeah, he's like, no, no, no yeah. I, don't want, I don't want to bowl. But someone would have It'd run over. the only over. time he's not looking at him. Yeah. <laughs> someone would have run over, grabbed his cap and threw it to the umpire and said, mate, you're bowling, <laughs> and bowling at that end. But no, he's, I mean, he's got all the skill there. He just doesn't do it anywhere near as much as he probably should, just in case something like this does happen. Yeah. Uh, it was Lyon and Cummins that were keeping things re relatively tight. They were going for under threes and over. Hazelwood and Stark were getting a little bit of tap. So Cummins... I suppose his captaincy, his new captain, is getting stretched a little bit as to finding a way. And the way was short pitch delivery, which ended up working superbly well. Well, it did. You can, you can sit back and question, regardless of feel set or, or, or execution, but it, it was spot on because, again, the art is luring in the batter in to make him feel like he is feeling, I suppose, secure in what he's doing, which Duckett did for a certain period of time. I thought he played reasonably well and controlled and England were in a good position, but, you know, I think it was a bit of a top edge, went quite flat to David Warner, caught a really good catch, started the England batters thinking that they should all playing in the same way. And if we rewind back to edge bass and that period of play in Australia's very first innings where they lost four for 14, in a similar fashion, yes, they weren't batters, it was a lower order dismissals, but it was all in the same vein. It was, it was, it was caught up in the moment and possibly going about it the wrong way. But, and given the context of what happened with Nathan Lyon, I, I do think that they're probably going about it the wrong way. I mean, if you're thinking uh, how to win the game, yes, you want to take the game forward, but overs under these guys' belt, bowling short will really, really hurt them tomorrow. So 
it's fascinating that Ben Stokes came out and, and, and played each ball on, on his merit as opposed to any mm. premeditation or, or continuing to try and access the boundary at will as opposed to um, waiting for the ball. Three big wickets fell to short delivery, so Pope to start with, then Duckett and Root. Before we get on to the, the technique of them, let's go to Cam Green because he picked up a wicket with a short ball first and it was a no ball. That's the second time I've seen it. Broad got Kawaja in the first test. Yep. It's, um, it's becoming an issue for both sides. I reckon Pat Cummins twice in the World Test Championship final as well. So it has been a, a bit of a topic around um, around this summer. I mean, had, those obviously don't have an impact on the Ashes, but moments like that can. Like just one little drop catch or a great party. Like I said on air, you know, a, a wicket or a couple of wickets off no balls in a series can yeah. be the difference, especially against, you know, two pretty evenly matched teams. So um, I've never seen, I, I think we brought up the stat, Cam Green bowled 32 no balls in his career before today. I've never seen him struggle as much as I did today. Mm. A bit of talk around the commentary box, is it something to do with the slope? Probably the first time he's bowled at Lords. You know, does that have some sort of um, impact on it? Um, but they've got to get it right, no doubt about it. Mm. And as you said, it's a disciplined thing. There's a line there. Keep your foot behind the line because they're big moments in games. Yeah. Taxing for the bowlers too, if that's an approach being taken and there is potentially no Nathan Lyon. Absolutely. Um, and, and that's the... That's the the, the, the context of the situation and I'm all for England trying to get on with the game and, and, and take um, Australia on with the bat but you isolate that moment given the, 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 the huge role that Nathan Lyon plays wherever in the world that they play a game is just a, a hole that can't be filled so whether it's Cam Green or the three front line quicks that do have to bowl or Travis Head or Steve Smith you know, it's, it's, it's not going to be as hard as it would be earlier on in the afternoon when he was on the park. Okay, so we've finished day two here at Lords. England still trailing by 138, they 278 for four. On what you'd say is a reasonably good batting day, conditions all look pretty good. England will be hoping for the same tomorrow morning. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it was amazing once the sun came out today how much that wicket changed, how quickly it changed. That was the thing. I mean, the Australians hardly got a ball off the straight, did they? Batting looked really easy, and that led to the tactical change, actually, because batting looked so easy. The Australians had to change it up and do something about it. And... And I thought that was, uh, it really was good tactical cricket from the Aussies. And I, and I, 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 I agree with what, I, what Owen's saying about situations and, and you know, they've been very vocal in the way that they want to play, but it, you can't do that all the time. Yeah. You're going to have to, I think they talk about making, um, is it bold, smart decisions or smart, bold decisions? I reckon today was a bold, bold decision. There wasn't much, and they yeah. had much, a lot of, lot of smart decisions made, I don't think, through that little passage of play. Um, but they'll learn from that. I'm, I'm sure they'll learn from it. And maybe it gets to the point, if they, if they actually want to keep going that way, maybe it's one of the two in the partnership that do it, not both. Yeah. You know, so may, maybe, they, you know, maybe they're happy for one to go and try and take him on, and if he gets out, then, then you stop. But to have both of them going at the same time, or three of them going at the same time, <laughs> and they all get out, that yeah. might be something they might think about doing. Okay, Harry Brook, 45, not out. Ben Stokes, 17, not out. Who's going, if you go along with Ricky's suggestion? There? I, I think it depends on who's bowling. Um, I think, you know, if you've if you got part-timers on, Harry Brooks has got to be the man to take it down. Like, if, yeah. if it's Steve Smith or if it's yeah. um, Travis Seven Head. Today, yeah. Absolutely, because that opportunity will present itself. Yeah. When you sit back um, after a day's play like today or even an evening's play like today mm. and think of the, the player against spin that Ben Duckett is. Mm. You know, it was a great contest in the afternoon between him and Nathan Lyon. But if it was Travis Head or mm. Steve Smith now, you'd say... Philly Boots, uh, and, and whatever clip you want. If you want to take yeah. for 20 and over, take it for 20 and over. Still play in the same vein, but it's just that context that, that Ricky is talking about is, yeah. is important. And the one thing that does, just to follow up on that, if they do go after that part-timer, what does that mean? One of the main guys has got to come back and bowl again. Yeah. So that, but that makes it even harder with Nathan Lyon not being there. Yeah. It sets it up beautifully for day three at Lords. Thanks for joining us on the Sky podcast. Fellas, thank you so much. Uh, a reminder too that even though it's Red for Ruth Day coming to the end, you can still donate right throughout the test as well. Any amount would be surely appreciated. We will see you at quarter past ten tomorrow morning for the start of day three.